Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats in the table where we meet are met by those in need. We have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh Lord God, we bring before you the cries of the sorrowing world. In your mercy, set us free from the chains that bind us and defend us from everything that is evil. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Psalm 22. But you, O Lord, be not far away. O my help, hasten to my aid. Deliver me from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth. From the horns of wild bulls you have rescued me. I will declare your name to my people. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, give praise. All you of Jacob's line, give glory. Stand in awe of the Lord, all your, you offspring of Israel. For the Lord does not despise nor abhor the poor in their poverty. Neither is the Lord's face hidden from them. But when they cry out, the Lord hears them. From you comes my praise in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the sight of those who fear the Lord. 
The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Let those who seek the Lord give praise. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of nations shall bow before God. For dominion belongs to the Lord, who rules over the nations. A reading from Galatians. Now before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian. For in Christ Jesus you are all children of God through faith. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female, for all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. Word of God word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of according to Luke, the eighth chapter, beginning at the 26th verse. Then Jesus and his disciples arrived at the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. As he stepped out on land, a man of the city who had demons met him. For a long time he had worn no clothes, and he did not live in a house but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he fell down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many times it had seized him. And he was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles. But he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the wilds. Jesus then asked him, What is your name? He said, Legion, for many demons had entered him. They begged him not to order them to go back into the the abyss. Now there was a hillside. A large herd of swine was feeding And the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these. So he gave them permission. And the demons came out of the man and entered the swine. And the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When the swine herd saw what had happened, they ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then people came out to see what had happened. And when they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. Those who had seen it told them how the man had been possessed by demons and had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them, for they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. The Gospel of the Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious healing God, we give you thanks for healing the man possessed. We thank you because we believe there is healing for all of us found in you. Help us in those times, Lord, when we are overcome by your love and power to not tell you to leave us. We pray all these things in your holy name. Amen. Wow, what a story. What a story the Apostle Luke has given us on this, the second week after Pentecost.
we see Jesus and his disciples arriving by boat in the country of the Gerasenes. Luke is deliberate about telling his readers that the country of the Gerasenes is opposite Galilee, the place from which Jesus and his disciples come from. Things really must have been obviously different over there. From the moment Jesus steps out on the out of the boat and onto the land, things get pretty strange and pretty frightening, to say the least. Jesus comes face to face with a demon-possessed man, a man possessed for so many years, for such a long time. Jesus finds the man naked and living in the tombs. This tormented man surely must have known who Jesus was, but he he fell at his feet and began shouting at him, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High? I beg you, do not torment me. Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. The man had been under guard and chained up in shackles. But he would break the chains and the demons would drive him into the wilds. But again... It was obvious that this man knew who Jesus was, if only by Jesus' reputation, at least at this point. Eventually, the demons, called legion, begged Jesus to let them enter a herd of swine. Jesus gave his permission for this. The herd, possessed with demons, ran down a hill and into a lake, and they drowned. Then things take quite a different turn for this once demon-possessed man. He is now fully clothed, and he's in his right mind. The people in the town by now also know what had happened, and that the man was healed, and Jesus had been the one who had healed them. The townspeople, they become very afraid of Jesus and what he has done, but... The big question is, why? I hope we ask this question of this text and are able to see a possible answer. They were so fearful, they asked Jesus to leave, to go away. So scripture says he got back in the boat and returned to the other side of the lake that he had come from. But a surprising thing happened. The once possessed but now healed man begged Jesus to let him go with him. But Jesus says no. Return. Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. And that's exactly what this healed man does. Luke has just given us the story of the very first missionary. We know the life of a missionary is never easy no matter where they serve. Whether it's on our own ground, our own country, or countries far away. But to be the very first one, this man had nothing to go by. Only what Jesus told him to do. Go and tell people what God has done for you. Sounds easy right? (laughs) Well, no, it's not. There are a couple of things to take notice of in this text. Why did the people tell Jesus to leave them? And why did Jesus tell the man he couldn't return to Galilee with him? These are big questions. In my ministry, I've come against this text for many years. And I've never thought about interpreting what is happening in such a way. But these questions make sense and have something to teach us. Both of these questions are extremely important, church. Take the first question. Why did the Gerasenes tell Jesus to leave them after they had seen what Jesus had done? And remember, they had been witnesses to what what he had done. For the possessed man, now healed. Very simply, 
They were afraid because the man had changed. He had been healed. He was not what he was before. They would also have to change into something better than what they were currently if they let Jesus stay among them. They would have to change. Wow. There's that word, change. And the second question, why does Jesus not let the healed man return to Galilee with him? Obviously, Jesus answers it himself. Return to your home and declare what God has done for you. This is the task of every missionary, beginning with the first. Declare the gospel of Jesus to all the world. This healed man, formerly possessed, would be declaring Jesus to the very ones who told Jesus to leave. And they didn't want to hear any of it. Does any of this sound familiar to us, church? Do we ever tell Jesus to go away because we like living the way we are instead of changing for the better? To be in the path that Jesus wants for us? Truth be told, and we all have to answer that maybe for ourselves, yes. Sometimes we do tell Jesus to go away. We seem often too comfortable being a follower of the world rather than Jesus Christ. The man was told to stay in order to give the Gerasenes the chance to change and to get out of their comfort zone. We all have that chance. We all are confronted with this question. We all every day of our lives are confronted with change. Change for the better. Not to be so wrapped up in the world that we forget that Jesus goes in front of us, behind us, beside us, is always with us. There isn't a place in this world that we can go where God in Christ Jesus hasn't gone before us. So with that, I will simply say, thanks be to God, and amen.
let us profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray for the church, the creation, and all in need. Holy God, you hear the cries of those who seek you. Equip your church with evangelists who reveal the continuous call of your outstretched hands and your promises of a home in you. God of grace, hear our prayer. You hear the cries of the earth. Restore places where land, air, and waterways have been harmed. Guide us to develop and implement sources of energy and food production that do not destroy the earth. God of grace, hear our prayer. You hear the cries of those who are marginalized or cast out. On this Juneteenth observance, guide us continually toward the end of oppression in all its forms, especially white supremacy. Bring true freedom and human flourishing to all your beloved children. God of grace, hear our prayer. You hear the cries of those who celebrate and those who grieve on this Father's Day. Nurture mutual love and tender care in all relationships. Comfort those for whom this day brings sadness or longing. God of grace, hear our prayer. You hear the cries of all living in war-torn countries. Spread your hand of protection over all those who are surrounded by the fighting. Bring a swift and peaceful resolution to all wars. God of grace, hear our prayer. We pray for all those things for which we have gratitude and are thankful. Let's take a moment to type our gratitudes in the comments section. God of grace, hear our prayer. We pray for all those things for which we have concerns and weigh heavily upon us. Let's take a moment to type our concerns in the comments section. God of grace, hear our prayer. You hear the cries of those who suffer. Come to the aid of all who are homeless, naked, hungry, and sick. We pray by name for Brent, Cheyenne, Larry, David, Jackson, Lori, Dave, Ron and family, and Debbie and family, as well as those listed on the prayer list, typed in the comments section, and remembered in our hearts. Bring peace to any experiencing mental illness that they can clearly recognize your loving presence. God of grace, hear our prayer. We give thanks for the faithful departed whose lives proclaimed all you have done for them. We pray by name for Jared, Pamela, Tim, Ron, and Ron, as well as all those listed on the prayer list, typed in the comments section and remembered in our hearts. At the last, unite us with them as we make our home in you. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of every time and place in Jesus' name 
and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. Those of you watching us from your living rooms at home, please share the peace of the Lord with each other. Let us pray. God of abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field, to equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy God, you alone are holy. You alone are God. The universe declares your praise beyond the stars, beneath the sea, within each cell, with every breath. We praise you, O God. Generations bless your faithfulness through the water by night and day across the wilderness, out of exile, into the future. We bless you, O God. We give you thanks for your dear Son at the heart of human life, near to those who suffer, beside the sinner, among the poor, with us now. We thank you, O God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord took bread. He blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. Again, after the supper, he took the cup. He gave it to them all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for many and for you, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in the remembrance of me. Remembering his love for us in the way 
on the way, at the table, and to the end, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has, is risen. Christ will come again. We pray for the gift of your spirit in our gathering within this meal among your people throughout the world. Blessing, praise, and thanks to you, holy God, through Jesus Christ, by your spirit in your church without end. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. In Christ's presence there is fullness of joy. Come to the banquet. And we cry, holy, holy, holy. And we cry, holy, holy, holy. And we cry, holy, holy, holy. Is the May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, through this meal you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, called each day by your Holy Spirit to continue in the covenant you made with us in holy baptism. As we live among God's faithful people, hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper. Proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed. Serve all people following the example of Jesus and strive for justice and peace in all the world. Amen. God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption, Bless you now and forever. Amen.
Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Tell what God has done. Thanks be to God. And let all God's people say, Amen.